Hey, this is Dennis with Cybercraft doing another PBQ with you. This one, I think, is on password security. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, okay, so you're provided with the following password. We're jump into this uh, brand new, fresh PBQ. You're provided with the following passwords. Password 123, whatever that is. This password, okay, we got five passwords. Rank the passwords from the most secure to the least secure. Okay. All right. Well, the least secure is definitely going to be this one. So let me go ahead and put that on the bottom. That's absolutely going to be, this could be guessed probably in a minute or under, uh, even with a brute force attack. Because it has the word password in it, it has a sequence of numbers in it. This one would also be very unsecure because it has uh, just letters and numbers so i'm gonna put that one next okay now the other ones it's gonna be tricky do all these have special characters and numbers this one has uppercase lowercase numbers and letters so i think i mean that one's very secure does this one have numbers this one has numbers uppercase and lowercase and special characters this one also does so it only has one special character and it's fairly short okay so I think this one would be the next least secure kind of doing this backwards and then between these two they both have uppercase lowercase special characters numbers and symbols so I think that it has to go to length the longer one's going to be more secure. So I think it's going to be this one. These are both, I'd say, secure passwords. But I think this one would be a little more secure. So most secure to least secure. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's go to the next part. All right, your company needs to store user passwords securely. You're given the following methods. Plain text storage, hashing with message digest 5, I see with SHA-1 and salting, okay? Hashing with SHA-256 and salting, hashing with AES-256 and salting, or reversible encryption. Okay, well these two are basically the same because AES-256, that's not used for hashing. So that is a form of reversible encryption or symmetric encryption. So this is kind of a red herring. SHA-256 is a good, that's a hashing algorithm. That's a very good one. And you also want to salt, so that's fine. MD5, we don't, that's deprecated for storing password hashes because MD5 has, it's vulnerable to collision attacks. There are known collision attacks for MD5. And of course we want to do plain text, so this is not it. So we just select one answer here. Now SHA-1 is deprecated, though it is used to be very secure but it's no longer used, so it has to be this one. Has to be number four, hash with 256 and salting. Okay, feel good about that one. Okay. All right, your organization is implementing a new password policy. The organization wants to prioritize security without causing disruptions to business operations. You are given the following options. Minimum length of 14 characters, no complexity requirements, change every 90 days. Minimum length of 14 characters include uppercase, lowercase numbers, special characters, change every 180 days. Minimum length eight characters include uppercase, lowercase numbers, special characters, change every 60 days. Minimum length of 15 characters, no change requirement. Choose the best combination. Okay, so I think we can safely X out number one and number four because there's no complexity requirement for number one though number one has a good length uh, and there's no complexity there's no change requirement for 15 characters 15 characters is a good length there's also no complexity requirement no change requirement means that a password hash if it's recovered at some point the hacker could spend a long time trying to brute force that or um, so there's longer for the the hacker to recover 
the plain text from the hash using rainbow tables or brute force. So ideally you do want to have some sort of change. Now what else does this say up here? The organization wants to prioritize, prioritize security without causing disruptions to business operations. So that's significant. It's not going to say that unless there's a meaning behind it. So I think what it's driving at is the length of uh, changing the password. And with these two options, well, first off, this is a little shorter and we'd be changing it 60 days. There's still complexity requirements. I think this is the clear choice though. Minimum length, 14 characters, uppercase, lowercase numbers, special characters change every 180 days. That's a good mix. That's a good mix, I think, of the two. We don't want to change too frequently because you're going to increase your IT support tickets, password reset tickets. So 180 days is usually a reasonable time frame for allowing a password to be uh, active. So I'd say number two. All right. Okay, your organization has just recovered from a cyber attack where a hacker recovered a list of stored password hashes for employee accounts. Okay, you have had everyone in the organization change their password. You now need to enhance the security of your organization's authentication process. You're given the following options. Password only, password and security questions, password and SMS based one-time password, password and a hardware token, iris scanner and hardware token, PIV card and PIN, password and time-based one-time password software token. Okay, select the options that enhance the security of the login process. Well, I think any of these would except for the first two, password only and password and security questions. This is example, this is not multi-factor authentication and then really that's what that's driving here. Um, so this one would just be something you know and this would also just be something that you know. So this one, you have a password, something you know. SMS based means you have to have your phone, something you have, so that's multi-factor. Password and a hardware token, that's something you have. The hardware token, something you know, the password. Iris scanner and hardware token. Iris scanner is something you are, your iris. Uh, iris is the colored part of the eye. And the hardware token would be the something you have. A PIV card and a PIN. PIV card is something you have, and then the PIN associated with it is something you know. That's multi-factor. Password something you know, and a uh, software token, time-based. That could be on an Authenticator app. Uh, you could also choose to put it on a on a device, but usually like a, an app on your phone. So this would also be good. Something you have, something you know. Uh, so I think any of these, but the first two, would be fine. So select the options that would enhance the security. I'm gonna select all of these here. Okay, I think that's good, let's keep going. All right, okay, follow on question I guess. Management has informed you that your department were receiving zero additional funding to implement the security enhancement. <laughs> you will not have any additional funding to spend. Now this is realistic. If we're talking about realistic PBQs, you know, we wanna, <laughs> This is a realistic PBQ, let me tell you. Yeah, that is, uh, it, it would be, be more realistic if this, uh, there was a budget cut. But uh, yeah, zero additional funding, that's pretty, that's on track with the real world. Okay, so we don't have any extra funding, so our options are the same. Select the option that would be the most cost efficient while still providing good security. Okay, that's a good one. All right, let's see. Most cost fit. So we have to. So these two are out because they're not going to do good security. This one requires employees to have a phone. Uh, this one requires us to buy a token. So that's out. I mean, tokens aren't that expensive, but we don't have any money. So can't do that. If the employees have, if depends on the uh, environment. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bring your own device or even a corporate uh, provided environment. 
we could just have the employees use their personal phones. Iris scanner and hardware token, that's, I mean, biometrics are out. That's very expensive. PIV cards are pretty expensive too. And then password and time-based software token. I think this is probably the best one just because this one implies that they have to have a phone. You don't necessarily need to have a phone to implement the time-based one-time password. Uh, you could do it other methods. So I think this is the the one that makes sense here. So I'm going to do password and time-based one-time password token. But yeah, I'd say this is a pretty realistic scenario. Okay, so let's do that one. So these two are very similar. Um, but I'm going to stick with this because you don't necessarily need to have a phone. This implies that you have to have a phone. It's SMS. So you need a mobile phone for that one. You could do time-based one-time password tokens on lots of different devices. Uh, so it's a little more flexible. Okay. All right, let's see how I did here. four out of five and I got 11 out of 12 points. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's see how I did, a few questions. I wonder where I missed. You're providing the followed passwords. Okay, looks like we got this one uh, correct here. So that was real good. This one and this one and the explanations, this is the most secure, the length makes it very difficult to decrypt, very good, very secure. Uh, good mix uppercase, lowercase. The length is really differentiating factor between these two, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, length really does add a lot of, um, a lot of difficulty. Even though this one has words in it, that's fine as long as it's long enough. Um, and it has the complexity. So this actually is a, pretty decent strategy for developing secure passwords that are easy to memorize. It's very difficult to memorize something like this, but it's pretty easy to memorize passphrases like this. This says the most important thing with the T and the G capitalized. I, I recommend doing something like that for developing strong passwords. These are just garbage passwords. <laughs> so, okay, uh, what's this one? Company needs to store user passwords securely. Yeah, SHA-256 and salting makes sense. Very secure hashing algorithm. And then this one should say this is deprecated. sha one's deprecated, not a hashing algorithm. Very good, very good. Okay, organization implementing a new password policy, prioritize security without causing disruptions. I think this one was, there's a lot to pay attention to here, but I think this is the clear choice, number two. All right, and then that makes sense there. Organization just recovered from a cyber attack where a hacker recovered a list of stored password hashes for employee accounts. Have it, everybody change their password. I think I got this one. Oh, I missed one. Okay, password and SMS based one time password. I guess I would have had to miss one here unless I got the last one wrong. Why is that wrong? Uh, while better than using just a password, SMS-based one-time speed can be intercepted or subject to SIM swapping time. Well, that is true. That is true. Making them less secure than hardware tokens is not an ideal solution for employee authentication. Might be better pursued for customer authentication. That's a good point, actually. This It did say, and I think I missed this part, it did say the passwords were, the password hashes were for employee accounts so this is specifically for employee accounts, SMS-based one-time password, probably not the best for employee accounts. It's a good solution for customers uh, because you don't have to have your customers get a hardware token or anything cumbersome, but for employees, you want something a little more secure. So I, I do agree with that explanation there. Good to know. Okay, very good. My team's doing a really good job with these questions. I'm liking them. All right. Informed you, management of four, yeah, zero budget. And with the budget, now this makes sense that this was also a good solution because this wouldn't be, we would know not to pick that if we got the last one correct. I just stumbled into this one as the correct answer. So, uh, secure solution, it's very secure. 
You can get a free authenticator app, uh, password only, and security questions not provide adequate security. All the others require purchasing of hardware devices. Okay, yeah, very good. And this one implies that we're either providing phones or we have some sort of phone system. Actually, no, this doesn't. This one isn't right because it's not secure. That's why it's not listed here at all, right? Okay, all right, very good. Well, I hope that was very helpful. I think this is a really well-written PBQ and very similar to what you might see on the test. Um, if you're looking for cybersecurity training, if you're looking for Security Plus, Network Plus, CISA Plus, CAS for Security X, check out the links in the description. Lots of courses for you. We're official uh, our CompTIA authorized partner. And you get the full CompTIA Learn Labs environment when you purchase our products. Uh, do use the links in the description. You'll get a big discount on the actual CompTIA materials. And you'll get our Cybercraft videos, PBQs, practice questions on top of that. So it's a great deal. And it supports the channel. So I appreciate you joining in. Uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you have a great day today. Thank <laughs> you.